Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Hey everybody. Well, it's Christmas time, and what would Christmas be without lights? <laughs> Lots of pretty sparkly lights. Eh, things that model railroaders generally like. I'm gonna cover how to make your Christmas train even lightier with simple USB decorations. So let's get into that. First thing you're gonna wanna do is look for some of these USB holiday decorations. They're usually pretty cheap, and it's important that they're USB, at least for what I'm gonna be teaching you here. You can probably use others for other things, but uh, for what I'm gonna do here, USB will work the best. Here are three different examples, and the one that I chose was the snowman, mostly because it's the one I could get the quickest. The other ones are coming from China, so probably won't get here early enough for me to help you. So here he is, pretty cool snowman. He's all red, looking smart and snazzy. And what we do is unwrap this USB cord. Here we go. And uh, if you're not sure, USB one looks like this. You can plug it into your computer or even into your phone and it will give you pretty lights. So this one, I'll plug it into a USB receptacle and there it goes. It has a cycling light that starts with red, green, blue, purple, very cool. It's the first time I'm seeing it too. Yeah, that'll work really well. There's yellow. It's exactly the kind of thing that I'm looking for. And he's small enough to put on a flat car. So that's what we're going to do. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clip off the cord. You don't need it, so you can use it if you want, but it, it's just gonna be a pain to and I'll clip this off so that I know it'll fit on the flat car and give me enough to work with. All right, there it is. If we're really lucky, it should have two wires in it because it doesn't do anything more than light up. We'll strip them. Colors might be different, but one of them should be, or at least is hopefully black. Mine, I've got black and white, but I'm gonna assume <laughs> that the black is ground, but I won't just leave you like that. We'll go ahead and test these out. So we'll just strip off the outer casing here and I will hook uh, my track up to five volts. That's what we're working with is five volts. So let me get it right around five, close enough, 4.89. Now the positive is on the upper track and the negative is on the lower. You can tell here by the two different colored probes that I have. And um, as long as we got them in right, they'll show positive. And if I flip them around, it won't destroy my multimeter. It'll just read negative. So now I'm sure that the upper track is positive and the lower one is negative. So we'll put my alligator clips on there. And the positive alligator clip is the one with the redder tinted wire. And I will put the redder tinted wire on the white and I will put um, the white one or the, the silver colored one onto the um, white and uh, onto the black. And there we go. It lights up and it's working just fine. So now that I'm sure the black wire in here is the negative and the white one is the hot or the positive, we can go ahead and start to wire this in. And I'm going to use a little circuit board just to make this easy. I'm going to use anywhere from a 3000 to 6000 ohm resistor. This one is like 56 or something, but I finally decided on a 3600 ohm resistor. I'm going to use a 470 microfarad capacitor, and I will also need a full wave rectifier. So those are the things you're going to need to get this to work. And the rectifier is going to be the thing that allows us to convert track power into the power that this thing needs. If you look, the rectifier, it really doesn't matter what voltage, all things considered, but the it's a six amp rectifier. And these squiggly lines are the, uh, these are the leads that you're gonna put the track power into. And it won't matter if you have DC, DCC, it doesn't matter which way you're driving the train, the rectifier will take our signal from the track and it will convert it to positive and negative DC. And again, these things handle a lot of voltage. That's not the problem. And you can tell from the 2W06 2 watt, six amp um, rectifier. That should be plenty for what we need. I'm pretty sure this thing will actually take in less than a quarter watt. That's why I used a quarter watt um, resistor. I'm not too worried about it. 
So here's how I'm gonna solder that onto the board and uh, I'll show you on the others. Here we go. Let me go ahead and take a screenshot of this. I'm just gonna bend these so that these leads are well clear of each other and the track in is going to be towards the bottom here. I'm just gonna use these large pads to bring the power in from the track and the positive out is going to be that leftmost lead, at least viewed from this angle, and the negative out is going to be the rightmost lead, at least viewed from this angle. And it doesn't matter which side of the track you put into the track in, again, it's a rectifier. It takes a signal, it could be any signal, AC, DC going one way, DC going the other, and it will rectify it or convert it into the proper plus and minus uh, power output for you. All right, let me go ahead and yeah, show you this once again. And if we flip it over, uh, really, I haven't done anything yet. I haven't soldered any of this. I've just simply um, put those on there, put the leads through the holes and then just bent them around. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the capacitor in there and the capacitor allows this thing to keep running even if we have bad track or you know, we roll over a switch or something like that. The capacitor will also smooth out the power going to it a little bit, which will help. And the capacitor will go in through these holes and it will connect thusly. Actually, let me first pre-label the rectifier. So at top now is the track in and track in. And the closest one to the middle is the positive out. And the closest one to now our right side is the negative out from the rectifier. Capacitor will tell you which side is the negative and positive side of the capacitor with um, this little strip looking. The little strip is always the negative. So the lead from that side is gonna get connected to the negative out of our rectifier and it's the other side, the positive side is gonna get connected to the positive output of our rectifier. And this doesn't have to be pretty. You can just solder them here and here and then clip off the excess. And the last thing that we're gonna to need to do is put our resistor in. And again, I chose a 3600 ohm resistor. Um, there's probably a fair amount of latitude in these little decorations. But I would say if you want it a little bit brighter, go with 3000. If you wanna be safer, I guess, go with something in the 5000s. But 36 seemed to work just fine. And the resistor, if you buy just a common one, it won't be polarized, so you can go either way and one side of that resistor will need to go into that positive junction that you just made, and the other side will become the output for the positive side of the Christmas decoration. So it will look like this, and then the other junction will be the negative side for the Christmas ornament. So you're thinking, can I really just tie these things into this solder junction? Don't Doesn't there need to be a pathway? Nope. Um, it doesn't need to work like that. The only pathway you need is from one side of the resistor to the other. The negative can go straight into that junction, no problem. And just to show you this works here, I will hook up my um, transformer to my multimeter and that way you can see that it won't matter if it's positive or negative. Um, it doesn't matter which way the train is running. So you don't even have to worry about which side you plop this down on the track. Go ahead and turn this on here to DC and right now there's very little voltage going in, but I'll roll it up to track level, which should be around 15 volts, but it doesn't matter if you're running DCC, you may get more, but I'll, I'll put it right around 15, 16, somewhere in there. And then I will hook up our little buddy. And you saw me put the alligator clips into the track in there and there he is, he's running. And right now it's running on negative voltage, negative 15.48 volts. If I flip it around to a positive 15.42, it runs just fine. And that's all thanks to that rectifier. And if you notice, it didn't even, uh, it, it didn't even like flicker on and off because the capacitor is holding up the power to it. So it doesn't matter, watch, I'll flip it here again. No problem whatsoever. It'll still keep going. I'll flip it again. No problem. And that's exactly what we want. And that way, no matter which way the train's going or if you're running DCC, DCC will flip really fast between negative and positive, but it doesn't matter. And the capacitor will hold it and the capacitor will also smooth out that voltage. So pretty nice, won't be a problem. And there he is, proof positive that he works. Here's what my little finished circuit board looks like with the guy soldered in there. There he is. Um, and so this is basically what I told you. I think I changed the position of these a little bit, but. 
That's all he had to do was to get him in there. And what I'm going to use is this little flat car that I had lying around. It's red, it should be fine. I'll do something about the safety first thing. I'll find a sticker to put over it. And I have got my metal wheels. It's important to use metal wheels. And he's gonna fit on there fine with some double-sided tape. I don't think that'll be a problem at all. And I think this will hold him plenty. So there you go, and we'll go ahead, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take two small pieces of metal and um, solder this on. This is bronze phosphor wire, it has really good uh, electrical properties. Um, so you just solder that on to two little pieces of metal. And I just used high strength CA glue to put those pieces of metal, in, just to glue them onto the bottom of the truck. And now I will just bend the phosphor wire so that's touching each face, the inner face of the wheel, and that's how it'll get power. So, so I'm gonna have to bend these a couple times, maybe clip them off, but that's effectively what you're doing. You're just bending those, and sometimes, it, like I said, it takes a little while. For some reason, it doesn't bend quite like you want. You can pre-bend these, but I just find that the glue sets better if it's uh, allowed to um, not have any pressure against it. And you can see I soldered the wire also onto the little pieces of metal. Now that way there is electricity going up through the wheel, through the little bronze phosphor wire, into that solder joint, into the wire, which is going to the top of the flat car. So this is harder to do on camera than you might think, but it's, it's sometimes can be a bit of a pain. But Sooner or later, you can trust that I will get these bent exactly properly so that they're touching the face of the wheel. And these wheels are roll true wheels. They're double insulated. If you're using single side insulated wheels, you can actually just run the bronze phosphor wire to the axle and then go to the other side and run your bronze phosphor wire into the axle there. That might be easier for you. I don't know. I don't find that it's too much trouble Plus this way I, can, I get to use just one truck and you may be thinking, well, what if the truck runs over a point or something like that that's unpowered? It's no problem. The capacitor will hold this up and you see I still don't have these quite bent exactly right, but you get the idea, they will be bent properly. Okay, after that, I basically just took some double-sided tape and put our little snowman on there. And then I also took, uh, well, actually for the rest of it, I used 6,000 glue, which is a type of urethane rubber cement. And I knew it wouldn't cut into the wires that way. And I didn't want all that exposed. So I took some of this old packing material. I, I, I think, you know, it's like a type of paper cloth that they also make like hospital gowns out of. I also attached that down onto the flat car as well. And now for the Christmas train itself, I bought this Nohab MY class locomotive. It's basically a European double-ended version of the F7. And here it is, it's made by a Norwegian company, NMJ. But it's a real train and I, I think they use it for freight locomotive power. You can rent it actually. So um, if you wanna rent it, I guess you can in Europe. I actually have a short history of the MY class buried in my video somewhere. So if you want to go look that up, you can. Here's a bunch, uh, they make a bunch of different MY class because they use these in Norway, but I'm pretty sure this one is now German. So there you go. Looks just like the photos. They did a really nice job. So this is going to be my Christmas train from here on out. And what's nice is since it's a real locomotive, it can actually haul freight around my system too. So I'm looking forward to plopping it down. As soon as it is done with its Christmas duties, that'll be pretty fun, I think. And just to do a little bit more, I'm going to add one more. I actually don't have a lot of Christmas cars. I've got one more, though, that's just been lying around, and that is made by Mantua. And I had this in some other collection, but it looks like it's pretty good shape. I don't know if the box is the actual real one. But let's go ahead and take it out of here. Very, it's popping. Yeah, come on, get out of there. There we go. Very, very cool. So I think that'll look well on the Christmas tree. So let's see the whole thing together. And once I apply power, it comes on. It looks great. And the artificial snow looks good enough for me now. Probably can use some of that spray artificial snow later. But I wanted to get this guys to you in enough time so that if you wanted to do this for your Christmas train, you will have that option. So there he is. The MY class is pulling them around just fine. And uh, again, it won't matter 
you know, if it's DC or DCC, no matter which way you have it running, it just won't matter. So there he is. You might be wondering what in the world is that thing that these the trains going around and that's Christmas Dryman and some of his friends and <laughs> Christmas Dryman goes back to when we first got married and we were very poor and we were moving around and also we weren't usually home for Christmas so we decided not to get a tree and I happen to have a large stuffed Dryman character he's a Japanese character if you want to go look him up he's pretty interesting and he had a Christmas outfit that came with him. So we decided just to use Christmas Dryman as our Christmas tree and the tradition stuck. We've, we've just kept going with Christmas Dryman. He does a great job and we'd hate to remove him from his job now. Okay, I hope that helped you out. If you like this, please let me know by liking it and uh, commenting if you want. I always appreciate that. It certainly helps my algorithm. If you want to see more stuff like this and you can go parse through the rest of my videos, please subscribe as I try to get at least two to three up every week. So I hope this helped you out for Christmas. And if you enjoyed it, I'd uh, appreciate hearing from you. And uh, yeah, I hope your Christmas and holiday season is a great one. And if you decide to do this, I'd love to see your work. So take care. Until next time, I will talk to you later. Happy model railroading. See you soon.